The only thing I find really strange about this arena in Ultimate is, obviously in normal hard and very hard, you're fighting it underneath the Central Dome. Makes sense. Ultimate, it's just now you've just gone to a completely different island in a completely different part of the world. Just, it's just it's, on the like North no Pole. Link to the forest all. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've never, I've never even thought of that until you said that. Like, yeah, you fight all the way through the forest, and then all of a sudden you're in Antarctica. Yeah. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video marks the second part of Ragol Memories, which is a video series that myself and Section Skyline put together where we ultimately run through the levels of PSO. We chat all things outside of life. We chat all things PSO. Uh, in this particular episode, we chat about the NPCs of the game. We chat about dodgy connections on older consoles, how the Sil Dragon is in a super, super weird location, and just all things that we hope you guys will enjoy because we certainly enjoy it and it's it's a huge huge passion of ours before we go ahead and jump into the video please do head on over to section skyline's channel check out his content he makes a lot and i mean a lot of pso content and he's an absolute fountain of knowledge great guy as well and i thoroughly enjoy making this series but without further ado like comment subscribe if you're new here and if you enjoy the content and i'll see you guys on the next one the way i see it is it can't be any worse than last time Categorically, it cannot be worse. I, I, I mean, may have forest, jinxed it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, this is forest like with me in ultimate. Okay, this woman here needs to not exist in the nicest way possible. What? Whoever programmed this game, why did they program it that as soon as you get near an NPC, they're like, oh, I'm going to start walking now? Yeah, it's also, if you get near one of them, they always seem to walk towards you as well. So it's like, it's no, I'm trying to go around you. Stop getting in the way. No, it is. It's literally like, oh, I'm going to go left. Oh, me too. I'm going to go right. I got me too. Yeah, basically on GameCube, when I used to play it online, it was a case of every time you played online, you just prayed that your internet connection didn't cut out. Just so, because you knew that if it did cut out, you were either going to lose stuff you didn't have equipped or just lose your character. Oh, my God. What was the... um? What was the online experience like? Because the load times, like, I mean, on the Dreamcast, it was horrendous. But I can imagine that the GameCube was probably a little bit better on the basis it was slightly newer. Yeah, it was... I'd imagine it was definitely better than Dreamcast. I mean, full disclosure, I never played Dreamcast online. Yeah. Um, it wasn't too bad, but there was still a definite delay when you started a quest. It's a lot better in Blue Burst. Did you have to enter your... Um, what was the license called? Was it the Hunter's license or something like that? Yeah, you used to have to upload yeah, a code. Yeah, Hunter's license. God, I missed that. That was so cheesy, but like back then there was, there was nothing cooler than like putting in a little code to activate your license. I kind of said this last night when I when I was streaming, but one thing that um, attracted me to the game was the the box art. Even before I'd even played the game and seen anything oh, yeah, about it, it, just seeing like that first image where all of the characters are like stacked in the center, like behind yeah. each other i've just thought it was really really cool um and i don't think that ever really left my brain to be fair i think i've always just been like a little bit obsessed of it and i don't know you can i think i've seen maybe a couple bits that you've got in the background of your room there you got some like figurines and stuff yeah was... i've got a little bit of PSL merch um so that artwork that you mentioned i've got i've got a t-shirt of that because i love that artwork as well yeah um yeah, i was trying I've to get an official one for ages they're just you can't get them you can only get like the etsy yeah. knockoff ones now that's what mine is yeah yeah well that's that's what i mean like but even they're still like 20 or 30 quid like yeah i did look for an official one and they just don't exist i mean yeah, i suppose trying to find a t-shirt for a 20 year old game it's probably uh, that's gonna be much i guess <laughs> i still every day i look on uh ebay and like, other selling sites for the official pso do you remember the the guide but like, the english guide okay yeah um, that, that guidebook or walkthrough or whatever it's called at the time, that was, I had one of those for the longest time. I don't know where it is now, but I must have read those pages like at least a thousand times each page. Like it was ridiculous. I used to read it just like go to bed and stuff, memorize pretty much everything. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Like, like, I suppose if you're of a certain age like us, when you bought a game like PSO, you I don't know if, about you, but I, I would sit down and read through the manual and like, yeah. you know, look at all like the, the information Absolutely. about all the classes and everything. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. cool. Even like totally like unrelated, but for even games that weren't remotely as in depth, like I don't know, Call of Duty 4 or Modern Warfare 2, like I would sit 
on the on the way home i'd have the game in my hand and i'd be like opening up like taking all the packaging off looking through the the manual and the, and the box art and all that sort of stuff because i, mean, yeah, I guess yeah. you could then like whereas now like you know, what are you gonna do like look at your steam code i don't really do you know what i mean like there's not really You're much you can really do. <laughs> yeah, this is not what can he do. Um, but no, I'm, I agree with you. There, there was some real, real magic there as well. And I think what also takes away the experience these days is that for every console, there there was a little bit of a, like an individual flair to each console. Like GameCube had quite a, like a wacky sort of controller. Dreamcast had these like hideous things that you would put in the back of the controller to even save things or put a rumble pack in and they all had their individual quirks whereas now oh yeah it's very much just like you, you know you download the game you play on your computer everything's accessible to you and, and that's it yeah i do miss wacky consoles really yeah like i said i went back and bought a dreamcast since but um one thing that just gets on my nerves about the dreamcast is the controller yeah i find it horrendous to use going back to it now oh, um, it's so clunky and unorthodox i'm pretty sure if i remember rightly i only had one thumbstick uh i can tell you yes it does yeah I yeah check that. yeah <laughs> hence why pso you have to use the bumper to adjust your camera because there was just no other thumbstick that you couldn't not like psu where you can kind of turn it around Funny thing is, because I'm so used to playing PSO, even when I play NGS, I still use the bumpers to reset the camera sometimes. <laughs> I can imagine it's like ingrained in you. I still do it on PSU actually when I'm playing it, like as much yeah. as you can adjust the the camera. But then PSU's got that kind of weird like hold the bumper down to shoot things. And I kind of I don't know, that never resonated with me. Like the fact that I don't have to pull out a separate weapon for a handgun, I can just put it next to my sword and swing. That was always a bit yeah. weird to me. Yeah, it was, I suppose, a cool idea at the time that you had, like, one-handed weapons, so you could have two weapons equipped at once. Um, but, yeah, I don't know how effective it was, really. I think a lot of people ended up using the two-handed weapons anyway. Yeah. I never realised, actually, how many weapons from this game are actually in PSU as well. There's oh, a, yeah, there's lords. There is, isn't there? There's so many that have been taken. Even go forward now to NGS. Um, although there's not many of the actual weapons... As weapon drops there's a lot of what are called weapon camos which basically make your weapon look like something else and like skins basically yeah and there's a ton of pso skins i wonder how many i'd be interested to see the metrics for how many like original pso players still play like ngs and or whether it is a totally different demographic i'm, I'm going to assume maybe it's slightly wow they poison you i had no idea they do that that's crazy uh, yeah, so they're, they're a lot more aggressive in Ultimate and they do, they do poison quite often as well. I just got a PD from one of them. Wow. <laughs> what, um, this might sound like a really stupid question because you're probably going to be like, I don't know, I just wanted to play that class, but what drew you to the Hugh Newell? What kind of made you want to play that? As, I'm going to assume that's your main at 171. Uh, definitely, yeah. So, I've got 171 here. Um, on the Sega Bluebird servers, I hit 200 with the Hugh Newell. Oh, wow. How and... long does that take? Sorry to diverge but uh, i want to say for me it took probably the cost of a couple of years but it was i was balancing between a few different characters so it's hard to give like a different an actual really. yeah yeah of course and it's not too bad until you get to sort of mid 180s and then the grind just kicks in really really hard um but yeah i've also got a 160 on gamecube as well oh wow um, do you still play gamecube then in amongst things or not uh, very rarely. I think, to be honest, I get pretty much everything I want from Blue Burst now, so yeah, there's yeah. not a whole lot of reason. But the thing is that my GameCube is is not particularly healthy anymore, so it, it has some like, seen better days. How much I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can uh, understand literally that. Literally worn out. I think the main reason I uh, main Huni well, I think, is because I, I like the sort of the dichotomy of the class. So I like how. Uh, well, my main thing is that I love I love playing Hunter primarily. So Hunters have always been my favourite sort of archetype of class in PSO. Yeah. But I love with Huny World that you can also effectively run as this kind of like a backup force. So, you know, you can be on the front lines, but you can still throw out heals, you can still throw out buffs if, you know, if there's no force in the party. Mm. Um, it's just a really, really versatile class. I see that. I see um, from sort of, even when I was playing with you yesterday, just having that. I mean, there's nothing worse than being... Uh, in a group full of androids or no one's got a decent level shifter or d-band yeah. and you know and then you're all just sort of slogging through it as much as a hue cast can hit really hard 
it's you've you, you still got limitations there if you haven't got the stuff to support around you as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I just think it, it's a weird class here in the world because it, it's a brilliant solo class because you can obviously buff yourself, you can debuff enemies, you've still got reasonable damage. You are one of the weaker hunters, but it's still pretty good damage. But in party play, it's kind of a weird class because if you've got a force in your party, there's not much need to have a Huni World because they've got better buffs. Of course. Um, and they can just buff the, the androids and make them ridiculously strong. So it is kind of an awkward place for multiplayer, but I, I still really enjoy it. And to be honest, even for like the harder areas in the game as well, like places like Tower, if you've got a force in the team, some it's handy just to have another character that can support. Yeah. Because the force is going to be doing so much support in any way that some it's just handy to have a bit of help as well. Of course. What about yourself? Is, is Rema your main class then? I think um, what spurred me to play this class initially, because this is one of my first... Well, actually, I tell a lie. I started off as a hunter, and then okay. I'm, I met Bernie in one of the um, side stories. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah. this guy's got a flamethrower. Like, he's got cool hair. He's a bit of an asshole, but I kind of like him sort of thing. Um, and just ever since then, I was like, yeah, that's what I want. I want like a big gun. I just want to shoot stuff. Um, but then I have like, have also, I like the Hugh cast because I like the interaction with Tyreek and kind of his storyline. And um, they're yeah, kind of my only oh, two like main characters. I, I am in desperate need of, of leveling my Hugh cast out. I think it's at 72 now. He's not that far okay. off ultimate, but um, it's just once you're in ultimate, already it's very then it's quite hard to actually i know that sounds ridiculous but to go back and kind of then level something else up to try and drag it through no i agree with you i mean i've got another character i need to level next week in the experience week who is brand new basically um and the thought of going back to normal hadn't very hard particularly going back to normal is, yeah. is not particularly appealing. Yeah. <laughs> but the, it, the thing is like I, again i've only spent the best part of 10 minutes in ultimate but you like slowly begin to realize oh, i've got a rare drop um, you slowly begin to realise like how little happens in um, normal. It's, oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's such a bare bones mode, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I suppose you probably don't realise it when you first start playing the game. You just think, oh, you know, cool enemies I need to kill. But when you go back after you've played Ultimate, you see how slow everything is. Yeah. You know, if you go back and look at a boomer in normal forest and look at how slow it walks towards Oh, it, yeah, you've just got it's acres of time as well. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of strange that you kind of get used to the speed in Ultimate after a while. It just becomes like the normal speed of the game. There's going to get to a time though where I'm going to go back to, to normal hard or very hard to level a character up and I'll be in caves and I'll be like running away from lilies because I'm like, I really don't want to die. And then they just shoot poison. I'm like, oh, okay, this is fine. I can deal it's with this. If you're on your huge cast, yeah. run away from poison as Android. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that I really struggle with is like the 45 degree angles in this game yeah like you could turn slightly to like shoot something and it's like just out of the way and you end up like putting a few bullets into nothing yeah yeah it it does take a while getting used to that um i still whiff shots all the time on my range so yeah don't worry about it there's <laughs> also trying to get your head around some of the weapons as well because i've noticed some weapons i've picked up which i've been like oh like this should be a lot better than what I'm currently using because it's like you know more powerful, more rare, and you use it. Yeah. And you're like, this kind of sucks. Um, yeah, it's so weird to know. Like maybe I'm just you know, admittedly not all of them are at full grind or anything, but it just seems to do like a crazy uh, difference in damage to what you're used to using. Yeah, I think honestly it is a case of just playing around with each weapon that you get and seeing if it is worth it because there are weapons in the game that. Even some of the quite rare ones are just not worth using. Yeah. Um, you know, so it is a case of just experimenting really and just seeing what works for you. It was in this exact spot that I first started to get trust issues with this game because I walked down here and I was like, oh, everything's fine. And then I just got absolutely yeah, yeah. clapped by a Hilda bear that just jumped out of nowhere. Like, critted me, killed me when I was like, I think I was like level seven or something by the time I got here. And I was like, right, okay. I do not trust anything now, anything ever again. Yeah, it's, you get to a point in Forest where you're just constantly looking at the map to see if you see the dots spawn off the map. <laughs> oh, no, it's so bad. I watched, uh, you've probably seen this, like, uh, I guess it's a meme. It's like a little skit where someone's got like seven monitors set up in a room and they've just like photoshopped oh. Bollocks, like walking through it. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. 
<laughs> that makes me laugh every time I see that. There's a guy holding like a walking stick or something, like trying to like shoot it or something. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it was very funny. It made me laugh a lot. The meme was yeah, like rapping that, massive. I was people are making PSO memes in 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the same <laughs> loads of people have been commenting on um the a couple of my videos saying that oh you know the remaster's coming remaster this like oh you, you know if you can believe the rumors a remaster's coming i, I really I, I don't know i really don't believe the hype at all it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense for a remaster to to come out now when they're on the cusp of doing what they are with ngs and it just seems crazy to me yeah it's an interesting one because I I know why people are saying about the remaster is because of some apparent source that said that they had proof of it, but um, from what I understand, it's a really shaky source. Yeah. Um, in regards to whether I think it's coming or not, I think the PS that Sega will do something for 2025 for the um, for the anniversary of PSO. It's going to be the 25th anniversary. But I don't know if it's a remaster because similar to what you mentioned, really, obviously, if they release a remaster. What it's going to do is pull people away from NGS. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Sega don't want people pulled away from their, their main money making game. Well, their main money you know, fantasy star game anyway. Yeah, I mean, the likes of, you know, PSU and PSO being run on private servers is doing absolutely nothing for them. So yeah. it's, it's a massive source of income for them to lose out on. It just wouldn't make a lot of sense unless they release it and heavily monetize this game. Well, I don't see how you would do that. If you're sticking to the, the true value of what this game is, that what can you really do? To be honest, I think if they did monetize a remaster of PSO, I don't know if I'd be interested in playing it because it yeah. wouldn't feel the same to me. No, it wouldn't. No, I, I agree. But yeah, I, th I think with the kind of community that PSO is, I think people wouldn't think twice about supporting the private servers. No, not, not I don't know slightest. if they feel the same about... You know, if they did a, a Sega remaster with microtransactions, I, I don't know how the well that would be uh, received. Um, I know that people do throw money at NGS for the for the gacha tickets, but I don't know how you would work it for PSR. That's one system that's come into our limelight, which I can honestly say wholeheartedly I absolutely despise. I I don't know, like I feel like. If you go back to what a gacha actually is, even in Japanese terms, you have way more luck and it's way more fair to get what you want out of those machines yeah. than it is in a game where... Did you ever read up about a game called Maple Story by any chance? I've heard of Maple Story, but I've never played it. Or so anything. it was like a, like a 2D-ish kind of like MMO kind of game and um, they got in a lot of hot water because the, the items they were advertising in their gacha system that it physically wouldn't even give you or the chance to, that, that it would give you is so like inexplicably low it just wasn't even worth buying uh, and they made yeah. a ridiculous amount of money like through that uh, I think it was it was crazy it was money I can't even fathom um, but that's just the way that everything's gone like look at Games like, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but look at Diablo Immortal when that came out. All the issues people had with that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, constantly, like, pay to win and, you know, like, certain gems that you had to buy to increase your drops and increase your chance of this, that, and the other. That's just... Yeah, I totally lost the interest with the uh, Diablo Immortal. Um, and for full disclosure, I am a massive Diablo 2 fan. I, I yeah. played that a ton back in the day. Um, yeah, just no interest at all in transactions in it i've actually someone commented on one of my videos and said about playing everquest and they play on like a private server and all this sort of stuff and i was looking at some like videos okay. and stuff for it honest honest to, to god if like if you are watching this like please i mean no harm when i say this i don't know how people play that game i don't it it, it just i watched a guy called josh strife hayes play about 100 hours of it like condensed into a video and okay it just looked to the untrained eye, it looked nonsensical. It really did. Um, the graphics were like, be, again, I'm not a, a massive graphics guy, but it just it looked shockingly bad. Like, I, I feel like you've got to have a level of art style or graphics to, to be immersed to some extent, you know? You need to have an art style to, to begin to have an identity, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if it's one of those games where nostalgia just fully drives the, the theory behind that and i wouldn't say i wouldn't like yeah. i would never play it but just looking at it face value i was like i don't know how anyone's playing this game but i guess a lot of people say that about pso right 
Oh yeah, I mean, there's going to be people who, who probably look at what we're playing and think, why would anyone play this janky old 20-year-old say um, that, you know, should have died on the Dreamcast. Literally. <laughs> who doesn't want to come in and get attacked by space chickens? Exactly. I've said this time and time again, and I know you, you'll echo this as well, but there's just something that can be said for how simple but complex this game is. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very, very simple game to get into, but once you sort of research into it and you, you look at how sort of much it can open up, um, it's surprising how complex it actually gets. Oh, definitely. Well, even from some of your videos, you know, I've learned things I would never have even known. Like, for example, I keep going back to it, but some of the moveset changes between classes, it's just insane. I would have never even thought of that, you know? Yeah, it, it is only for certain classes that it affects, but yeah, for some reason they just decided that a few of the classes were going to have different animations. It had always been a thing where male and female had had different ones, but I think it started with, and I may be wrong on this, but I think it started with the GameCube and Xbox versions with the new classes that they introduced. So I think all of those have unique animations. But again, it's something that, unless you were playing the game quite a bit, you probably wouldn't even notice it. No, yeah, very true. I just love the little, like, cheese strats and stuff that you can do like in these games, you know, like hiding behind doors and, like, pressing the start menu to get away from traps and uh, like little things like that that if someone watched you that had never played this before they'd be like what are you doing why is the menu open every five seconds like well, i don't understand this yeah so i know you mentioned about um, opening the menu to avoid traps there's actually another use you can do for that as well so when you're fighting volopt on his second phase he's got an attack i don't know if you've seen it it's an attack where he, he tries to imprison you if he, he fires this like orb but you that chases you oh that's cool and it's it imprisons you over hit you. If you get chased by that in ultimate, it, it goes faster than your character, so you can't actually avoid it. So what you do is you just open the menu and run in circles, and you no can avoid way. it by doing that. No way. I didn't actually know that. Genuinely, I had no idea. I actually, I think because on Dreamcast, because I didn't party that much, I had no idea that the dragon didn't have to go into its diving phase. I had no <laughs> idea that you could like kill it before that. Do you have, have a, uh, a favourite weapon that you've got currently? I see you using those, like, dual swords. Yeah, so that's um, Sangha and Yasha. Yeah. So they're, they're a pretty good twin sword. There are better ones in the game, but I've always used them because it's... Well, Yasha is one of the rarest items in the game in the um, like GameCube and Xbox and on the old uh, Sega servers. And it was one of the very few sort of uber-rare things I ever found in PSO. I think it looks really cool with the build you've got. I just, I don't know, those blades, they just look kind of timeless. I've never seen this attack. This is interesting. Ah, oh, I missed it up. <laughs> oh, you got to try and get out in time, I see. Okay. Yeah, so it differs a little bit to the regular dragon, where instead of going across three times, he goes across twice and then round once. And round, yeah. I quite like the silver dragon, honestly. I think it's a, it's a pretty cool little change. I was not used to how fast again. he is. Like, when you when he first spawns in, you're like, oh, I've got acres of time. Like, don't even worry about it. And he's just in your face. You're like, whoa, okay. I know the, the graphics would have been tweaked ever so slightly, probably with the um, private server, but I am always still so impressed. Look, look at... Look, they've even replicated the Northern Lights in the background. Like, I know that's probably not exactly what they were, they were going for, but, like, <laughs> it just... They could have... Do you think for the time this game released, they could have put nothing there? That could have just been like, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. you know, like mesh or just black and, and no one would even bat an eyelid. But there's so much thought that's gone into it. But like even these little um, these little holes on the floor, with like the, the, yeah. like the meshes and textures, like in most modern games, now they disappear. You know, like they're just still here after all this time. Yeah. The only thing I find really strange about this arena in Ultimate is... Obviously, in normal hard and very hard, you're fighting it underneath the central dome. Makes sense. Ultimate, it's just now you've just gone to a completely different island in a completely different part of the world. Just it's, 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 on the like north no pole, link to the forest all. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've never, I've never even thought of that until you said that. Like, yeah, you fight all the way through the forest, and then all of a sudden you're in Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> Geographically incorrect. <laughs> I've never thought of that actually, because yeah, I suppose actually, if you fight, if you fight the dragon underground, ultimately in a cave, that would make sense that the next place you go to is a cave, and so yeah. on and so forth. 
Um, whereas, yeah, you'd think, okay, right, so where are we off to now? Are we off to, like, see Santa or, like, what's, what's going on? It's the snow level next. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a cool level, actually.